It's the nicest riding bike I've ever ridden. Welcome back, friends. Happy whatever day this ends up posting. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the nicest riding bike I've ever ridden. Not owned, ridden. And before I do that, a lot of you have already heard this, but it's been a while since I went through it. And in case there are any new people out there uh, or just somebody that flies by, clicks on it, and before they have a chance to go, this old guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, and click off. I got my first bike shop job in 1988. I bought my store in 2003. Aside from a year and a half in corporate retail, not fun, five years in the ski stroke outdoor business, a lot of fun actually, and nine months in the trucking business that I'm loath to talk about, I've spent my entire adult life working in and or owning bike shops. I say that because when I say it's the nicest riding bike that I've ever ridden, I've owned a lot of bikes, but the number of bikes that I have ridden has got to be an order of magnitude higher. So that's the context. And I'm of course talking about the Rivendell Bicycle Works, A. Homer Hilson. Um, I always, you know, take a little pause now when I say it's the nicest riding bike I've ever ridden because a couple of years after I got the Hills and I got a Cheviot, um, which at worst was level pegging as far as how those bikes rode. Really kind of two sides of the same coin, right? Just like the long haul trucker or disc trucker and bridge club are kind of two sides of the same coin. Um, but it still remains. I mean, I bought the bike sight unseen. Uh, I had been interested in Rivendell after seeing uh, an advertisement in Bicycle Times. I didn't know anything about them. And for about a year, I circled around and tried to, f you know, find a way to get a bike that was like a Rivendell. And I obviously, I didn't have much success. And I finally just bit the bullet and called them up and and bought one, bought a frame. Got the bike, uh, or got the frame, built it up, took it out into the parking lot. I got about three pedal revolutions in and said, well, this is the nicest riding bike I've ever ridden. So what m makes the A. Homer Hilson, and really to a large extent, any Rivendell ride the way they do? Well, I mean, it's Grant and Grant's philosophy on bike geometry and how bikes should be put together. The only way that I can describe it is that the bike has very slack seat and head tube angles and a very low bottom bracket. And I think those things are what give you that feeling of sitting in the bike as opposed to on top of the bike. Um, I'm sure there are people out there that you know, studied uh, trail and all of that jazz. I, you know, none of, I've said it before, none of that stuff interests me. What interests me is the end result. And it's just a phenomenal riding bike. Now, who's it for? Or what kind of bike is it, maybe, is the better question. The e. Homer Hilson's a road bike. Um... You know, when I bought mine, and I'm going to dig around and see if I can't find some pictures of my bike. Uh, you know, when I bought my bike, there weren't any gravel bikes yet. They were still, you know, cycle cross bikes were kind of serving double duty for that. Um, 
there were precious few bikes that had 650B wheels and even fewer, you know, that would take that, you know, kind of a four, 38 to 42 millimeter wide tire. Um, you know, so it was really, although it was not a new concept, it certainly was unusual for the time. You know, it's kind of less unusual now, but still, back in 2008, 2009, 2010, man, it was people didn't know what they were looking at. So, but it's a road bike. It's got lighter tubing than a Sam Hillborn and certainly lighter than either of the touring bikes. It does have some rack and fender brazons, obviously. You can put a little bit of weight on it. Um, I use mine primarily for commuting um, and just kind of general road riding. Obviously, it's gonna work with drop bars and any kind of alt bar It's just, yeah, I, I can't say enough. Full disclosure, I mean, I haven't, I haven't ridden one since the Chainstays got a case of gigantism. <laughs> but I did ride a customer's uh, Appaloosa that had the long Chainstays, and it was almost unnoticeable. You, you know, you didn't really notice, I didn't notice anything different from any other Rivendell that I had ever ridden. Um, you know, obviously, who's it not for? Well, somebody that wants to put a bunch of weight on their bike, somebody that wants to run a tire wider than, say, 45 millimeters, somebody that is averse to a road caliper brake because it still does use a road caliper brake. I think the Tektro R559 is one of the few brakes out there that'll work with that bike. Um, but if you just want something to, you know, go on club rides and or back and forth to, to work, it's just a, it's a tremendous amount of, amount of fun. And now I'm starting to miss mine. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, obviously put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, all of that. I hope you're doing well. And I hope something good happens to you today. Until next time, be nice, work hard, ride bikes, play music when you can. I'll talk to you soon.